from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Okay, good evening. My name is Carlos Olave. I am the head of the Hispanic Reading Room. And on behalf of the Chief of the Hispanic Division, Dr. Georgette Dorn, who was not able to be present today, I'd like to welcome you to Mr. Juan Amaro's book presentation of Outstanding Catalan Contributions. Founded in 1939, the Hispanic Division of the Library of Congress was the first international and air studies reading room in this institution, established by this institution. In the same year, the Hispanic Reading Room was inaugurated to service the library's growing Luso Hispanic collections. The Reading Room is the Center for Hispanic Studies and offers services in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. About 250 researchers visit the Reading Room each month to view Hispanic materials of all kinds. Although its primary emphasis has always been the acquisition of current materials and uh, government documents, the Hispanic Division has also uh, acquired a rich collection of rare items. The division has been instrumental in acquiring significant gifts of manuscripts, music scores, posters, photographs, and films. It has developed special groups of materials such as collecting folk music from San Antonio, Texas, and pioneering the recording of Hispanic writers through its archive of Hispanic literature on tape, which is currently and gradually being digitized for wider public access. The Library of Congress houses 13.5 million items related to the Luso Hispanic world. Of these 13.5 million items, 3.2 million are books and serials. The staff of the Hispanic Reading Room oversees these materials. They, uh, they assist researchers in retrieving items such as maps, recordings, manuscripts, prints, photographs, reference books, books and artifacts. The Library of Congress has amassed the world's finest collection on the history and culture of Iberia, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and that of the Hispanic population in the United States. Many of the rare items were received as gifts, such as the rare books donated by Lessing J. Rosenwald and manuscripts given by Hans P. Krauss. Gifts and bequests have uh, have enabled the Hispanic Division to purchase materials in various formats in addition to books and periodicals. And now I would like to introduce you to Maria Molina, the culture attache of the Spanish Embassy. Maria. Thank you. So uh, I'm the cultural counselor and head of the cultural office. Um, we have a cultural center in 16th Street, by the way, and I would be happy to host you there. Uh, we are in charge of the cultural promotion of Spanish culture and all kinds of exchanges in the culture and arts. And to fulfill that mission, we, we have created a program called Spain Arts and Culture, who aims to bring uh, quality shows, quality events, and all kinds of authors, artists, and performers from very renowned to less renowned emerging young artists. Um, well, I'd like to thank first the Hispanic Division for inviting me and for organizing this event, for being such a valuable partner for us, for other uh, Spanish-speaking uh, countries, and also Portuguese, um, because you are really important to us uh, for your collection and, and for all you do. Uh, thank you. Um, I wish to congratulate the author and his team, which I think, I think they are here as well, for producing this wonderful work. Um, uh, I'm eager to, to read it, to share it with the embassy, uh, and we're certainly proud of, of you, and of course of, of uh, Catalonia's contribution to, to the arts of culture of Spain and uh, worldwide, the imprint they have left all over the world. Not only Catalonia, but I understand other Catalan-speaking regions which are referred to in the book, I, I, I guess. So we're proud of being diverse in Spain, of being rich and, and, and varied, having different identities. And particularly, we're very proud of, of, of Catalonia's contribution, which has always been very important because it's been a beacon of our arts and culture, traditionally, historically, and also currently, nowadays, um, for sure. 
Um, it's thrived in many traditions that you know of, customs, celebrations, but not only. It's always been at the vanguard of contemporary arts, uh, of architectural design. It's a literary hub. It's the Mecca uh, still in Spain for the uh, publishing world in Spanish and for the Spanish speaking world. And it, it's still uh, producing very interesting and innovative ideas and festivals such, I, I'd like to mention some that I look at, like uh, Angar or uh, Sonar Festival, but there are many others which, with which we, we, we like to work uh, and, 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 and they're very important w worldwide. Uh, our embassy is focused on, uh, of course, fostering connections between the US and uh, Spain and Catalonia, of course, there has a very big role to play, and we would like uh, to continue uh, helping that, enhancing that. So thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me uh, to talk as well. Enjoy. And now we have uh, Dr. Manuel uh, Perez, who will speak about the Hispanic collections. He is our um, Spanish Air Study Specialist. One moment. Um, the um, Library of Congress uh, possesses a rich collection of items uh, from Spain, uh, including books, maps, newspapers, manuscripts, photographs, and, and um, and other items. Um, examples include the first edition of El Quixote, 1605, uh, the Book of Privileges of Christopher Columbus, 1502, the first Spanish language dictionary from uh, 1611. Um, we may very well have uh, the best collection about the Spanish Civil War outside of Spain, and that includes 123 uh, original posters. Um, some of them um, actually is some were by the um, government and uh, others by the um, by the rebel side. Uh, many of those posters were printed by the uh, Generalitat. Um, from that period of the Civil War, I always like to mention that we have a very special book or a very special poem by Pablo Neruda, um, which he dedicated uh, to Spain. It's called Spain um, or España en el Corazón. And it was published in Girona in 1938 by the, um, by the Ejército del Este. And the peculiarity of the poem is not only because it's such a beautiful poem, but also what makes it peculiar is the fact that uh, the material that was used to um, produce the paper came from the uniforms or shirts of uh, Republican soldiers who had died around the area uh, uh, in Girona and, and other places. There are only um, two or three copies now available, and we have one of those copies, of course, is under um, lock and key. Um, the um, the richness and variety of the uh, library's holdings is um, is uh, reflected in our variety of the Catalonian holdings. For example, we have books on on or by uh, Montserrat Caballé, Salvador Dalí, An Anthony Godi, Pau Casals, Pau Casals, and um, uh, they represent they may be almost 2,000 volumes. Um, and for Pablo Casals, we also have lots of video and film uh, of his concerts, many of them edited by the, um, by the Museo Pablo Casals uh, from Puerto Rico. Um, but we also have uh, more contemporary writers like uh, Merce um, Rodoreda, uh, Perry Calders, uh, Josep Pla, Salvador Espiu, uh, and we even have 16th and 17th century editions of works by Ramon Lourdes, even uh, one from the 16th century, which is attributed to him, but there are now s some doubts as to whether uh, that work of alchemy is really his. Um, and uh, those two works come 
uh, they're both in the same volume and I think they date from 1541 or something I'm not um, quite sure um, and um, but also we have more contemporary writers uh, as an example uh, Marta Rojas or uh, Jordi Punti the library uh, even has an, in, um, uh, an Italian translation of uh, Tiran Lo Blanc from uh, 1538. Um, for history, uh, just searching under history, under Catalonian history, it's over 500 volumes. I can mention um, Esteban de Corvera, Catalunya Ilustrada from 1678 to the more contemporary Jordi Canal, Historia Minima de Catalunya, published in 2015. Um, early description of Catalonia could be, for example, a geographical and historical account of the Principality of Catalonia and Earldom of Barcelona, published in London in 1705. Um, again, to the more contemporary, Barcelona Secretos a la Vista, published in 2015 by Xavier Ceros. We also have um, items or books relating to, to law, and we have several which are really, again, quite outstanding, and again, also under lock and key. Uh, like, for example, uh, Jaime, Canther, um, Jaime Canther's book, um, published in 16, uh, 1618, and even uh, a 1621 edition of um, the from the uh, by the 15th century Catalan jurist um, Tomás Mieres, uh, his most famous work. We have a this uh, 1621 edition, um, and just by closing, I you know it's because we have so much, uh, so many so many different items. I was mentioning uh, to our guests just before we came in, that we even have 12 volumes of, um, of El Jabato, the famous comic book by Victor Mora, who just passed away um, last year in, in Barcelona. So, um, so uh, the book which is being presented today to the library, Outstanding Catalan Contributions, um, will enhance even more the richness of our uh, Spanish materials in general, and Catalonian uh, materials uh, in particular. So um, let me introduce you to the person who is going to make the donation to the library and also talk um, about the book. Uh, Mr. Joana Moros holds a doctoral in industrial engineering. He's the president of Fermed and Business EUMED and the Fundación Occitano Catalana. He has been the Director General of Programming and Supply of Nissan Motor Iberica, as well as President of Nissan Distribution Service uh, in Barcelona. He is a member of the Board of Barcelona Port and the Industrial Engineers Association of Catalonia. And um, he is the President of Business, Business Management Commission of Auto Terminal, S.A. Logística y Transporte Ferroviario, uh, Social Steering Committee of the Universidad Politécnica de Cataluña, and many other uh, associates. It's just too long to mention everything. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Amoros is the author of many books and has participated in seminars and conferences on numerical control, operation research, logistics, and um, business management. Uh, he has received um, several awards, um, among them the, uh, Crau, the Creu de San Jordi, the Medalla al Reconocimiento Empresarial, and the Premi Jaume I de Actuación Cívica and Medalla de Honor by the uh, um, City of Figueres, among many others. So without further ado, Mr. Um, Mr. Joana Moros. <clears throat> okay, first of all, uh, thank you very much for your kind invitation. We are very, very, very pleased <laughs> to offer this book 
to the Library of the Congress in the United States. For us, it's uh, key <laughs> to, to have this book in this famous and extraordinary library all over the world. Then, thank you very much to uh, the direction of the, of the library. Thank you to the representation of the Spanish Embassy to come here with us, and all of you, thank you. Uh, well, I have to talk a little bit about the, the book. No? The book is a heavy book. First of all, it's a heavy book. <laughs> it weighs, I know it in kilos, no? it weighs 2.6 kilos. Then it's quite significant. <laughs> To transport and to, to send by mail is a little bit difficult. Well, uh, this book uh, starts to, with, with the, the idea to do this book it starts more or less in 2003, more or less. But uh, as I, am, I have been in, engaged with many other issues, like, for instance, the Mediterranean Corridor and railway networks, etc., etc., then the, the book stops. <laughs> and then we start finally in 2008. And we finished the book in 2014. Basically because we like to present the book, the Catalan version of the book, considering the three centuries after uh, for us was uh, a defeat of uh, uh, 1714. No? Then we celebrate, as uh, Catalans used to, to celebrate uh, uh, the, the defeat, not the, the <laughs> because we, we all never win nothing, then we, we, we used to, to celebrate defeats. Well, then, uh, in fact, we succeed to present the book just in December uh, 2014, in uh, the premises of the Catalan government. And perhaps, uh, before to continue my presentation, you can see a small video. It, it's, uh, it only lasts uh, five minutes. And perhaps you could have a more rough idea of the content of the book, and then I will continue. I think they said that if I push here, Mm, I guess I will need some help. The book of outstanding Catalan contributions is an initiative of the Occitano Catalan Foundation. Work on the book began in 2009 instigated by the promotional team, which included the late Joan Triadu. The Book of Outstanding Catalan Contributions is another way of interpreting the history of a people through the contributions it has made, which have had an impact across Europe and the world. The book is divided into three parts. A brief summary of the history of Catalonia, descriptions of the contributions chosen, and opinions of leading figures about the future of Catalonia. The book has 744 pages and almost 1,000 illustrations. It is published by Editorial Pages in four languages, Catalan, English, Spanish and French. The authors are members of the promotional team. It opens with a transcript of the speech by Pau Casals of the United Nations on the 24th of October 1971. I am a Catalan, today a province of Spain. But what has been Catalonia? Catalonia has been the greatest nation in the world. I tell you, I will tell you why. Catalonia has had the first parliament much before England. Catalonia had the beginning of the United Nations. The purpose of the book is twofold, 
To show that Catalonia's ability to contribute in all areas makes it an important European nation. And to increase self-esteem and spread the word around the world that the Catalan people are an open people, capable of projecting themselves through innovation and action of universal reach. The book is being produced through crowdfunding in which anyone can participate, acquiring copies corresponding to their contribution. A people's ability to contribute to humanity is inextricably linked to the vicissitudes of its history. History is the thread which follows the trajectory of a people and guides it towards the future. The contributions of previous generations underpin those of those to come. The Catalan nation deserves to occupy its rightful place in Europe and the world. Now is the time to take a major step forward for Catalonia. Well, then uh, the book, uh, here you have a rough explanation of the book and uh, of course one main aim of the book is to get aware the Catalan people regarding the contributions that we have made, because unfortunately uh, our history in many occasions has been forbidden, then it's very difficult, uh, nowadays it's different, but uh, during the Franco regime was persecution to the Catalan culture, the Catalan language, etc., etc. Then many people doesn't know which Catalan people has made eh, in, to, to the general uh, progress of the humanity. Then, we, this was the first idea. And the second idea, basically, was to get aware all over the world what we have made. Mm? Uh, that has been spread out and has had some, in, some inter, international impact everywhere. This is uh, the topic of the book. And as uh, you have seen, we have made uh, four uh, different versions. One in Catalan that has been presented in in the premise of the Catalan government at the end of 2014. And by the end of uh, 2015, we present in the Institute of Studies Catalans the other versions, eh? the Spanish version, the French version, and the English version. And uh, now what we are doing is to present the book all over Catalonia, all over Europe, and all over the world. And this is what we are doing at the moment. And uh, the book, as you have uh, seen, there is three parts, one that basically makes a short explanation, only 25 pages, of uh, our history, in order that the, the reader could know in which context has been made the contribution, in which area, because 
uh, we start in the Middle Ages, uh, there are contributions from the 10th century. Mm? Then uh, Catalonia is a very old nation in Europe, and uh, till today. Mm? And uh, after this uh, first part of the book, that, are, as I said, is only 25 pages, uh, following this, start the explanation, contribution by contribution, from the Middle Ages till now, the uh, positive contribution that we, have, uh, we have, uh, that we have made. I have to say that the Occident Catalan uh, Foundation is not a political foundation. It's a foundation uh, that uh, has been created in 1990. Mm -hmm. And basically, our aim is to produce, we have made some dictionaries regarding Catalan and Languedoc, uh, and we have made, uh, we have organized some important congresses uh, in 2001st, uh, and we have made several publications, and now we have made this publication. This is uh, a non-profit uh, association. Mm? Then uh, we don't earn money with this, with the foundation, and I have to say as well that all the authors of the book, uh, we have made this gratia tamore. And then we, <laughs> nobody earns money to doing this book. And something else that I think is important is that we have made this book without any subvention, any official subvention. Hmm? No, no, then we cannot say that this, this is a, one political trend, another political, no, no. This is only so, civil society. That's all. Mm? And uh, in the second part of the book, there is the description in chronological order from the ages till now of the different contributions. And I have to say that we have contributions in all fields of activity. Mm? If you go, if you look at the at the the topic of the content by topics you will see that uh, we have contributions in medical science, we have contribution in architecture, in, in plastic arts, in, in uh, philosophy, in psychiatry, in uh, cuisine, etc., <laughs> etc. Et in the, re the socio-religious religious field, in, in all fields, eh? you will see that it's really uh, uh, contributions in all fields. And we discover, because when we start to, to prepare this book, we said, well, we will talk about 100 contributions, 100 outstanding contributions. But we start to do, and we saw that, oh, we are overpassing 100 contributions. <laughs> well, we will name the book 150 contributions. But still, we overpass. <laughs> and finally, the problem is that uh, we like to present the book in 2014, and then we have to stop because and we stop in 223, that is a figure that is a little bit cabalistic, but uh, we stop here. But I have to say that, in fact, there are about 260 or even more, because in, in many cases we make group of, of uh, contributions in a single contribution. For instance, aeronautics and automotion, automotion we, we have joined together, and then there are there several contributions. Then, if you add all of them, we can reach to 260, etc. But in New York, uh, let's say, yeah, but you have forgot to put, uh, I will not pronounce very good in English because in Catalan it's Ferragut. Hmm? But <laughs> in English is, uh, I don't Farragut. know, Ferragut. Ferragut. No, you said, why you have not put Ferragut? That was a hero of the. Independence War in the, in, in, <laughs> a hero of the of the Civil War in the United States. And well, we forgot uh, in the second edition <laughs> we will put, frankly speaking. Then uh, we have to say that uh, this book, there are other contributions that perhaps in the second edition we will include. But <laughs> that being, this is what what I can say to you. Uh, what is important is to, to say that uh, uh, at the end of the book, we have asked the opinion of many stakeholders in Catalonia today. Hmm? From the president of La Caixa, that is our emblematic bank in Catalonia, 
to the abbot of Montserrat, that for us is also an emblematic monastery. Then we have there the presidents of the union, uh, the, sorry, the general uh, secretaries of uh, unions, the presidents of employer associations, some of commerce, um, most important uh, town councils, etc., etc., etc. We have asked the, the rectors of the universities, everybody, everybody. We ask, what is your opinion regarding this process of contribution? Because you have to take into account that, for instance, in 1930, Catalonia only had 2 million people. Nowadays, we have 7.5. And it's very funny to know that, in fact, if we look how many people is really with uh, all the ancestors from Catalonia, only one third. All the other people came from over part of Spain from, in Barcelona, uh, I think there are about 400 different languages. We have people from everywhere in the world. And what is very interesting to know is that there is no problem. The integration is fantastic in Catalonia. And uh, we are very proud about this. Catalonia is a melting pot, like it is United States. But we have no the problems, fortunately, that, for instance, you can see in the suburbs of London or suburbs of Paris, we don't have these problems. Uh, there is a very, very uh, good uh, in the, in understanding in between all the people, and I think that is uh, one of our strong positions at the moment. That is very complicated for Catalonia because, as you know, somebody will, will, will like to get independence, some other not. We will know what will happen finally. But, uh, in fact, perhaps nowadays that uh, in the newspapers everywhere we see that Catalonia this, Catalonia that, well, uh, here you can see a, a book that is not a political book, and perhaps through this book you can get aware of what is Catalonia, at least what Catalonia has contributed eh, uh, to the general progress of, of the different countries, uh, particularly in Europe, but also in the United States. Here, in, the, in this uh, folder, you, uh, you can find the list of the contributions related with United States. And there are four pages of, I don't, I, I have not counted uh, them, but probably there are uh, probably uh, close to 100 of these contributions that have relationship with United States. Hmm? From the Romanesque art, because in the Cloister Museum in New York, there are a lot of uh, Catalan Romanesque art yeah, that, uh, in, this, in this museum. But uh, we have, for instance, Sert, that, as you know, is one of the painters that paints the, the walls of the uh, Rockefeller Center main hall in, in New York. Hmm? Or, uh, I don't know, for instance, Regarding the, the last, because this is as well by chronological order, uh, in, for instance, we have now a lot of uh, key people that is uh, working in the United States in many important issues. No? And uh, one of them, for instance, is Josep Baselga. Josep Baselga managed the oncology division in the Harvard University, medical director of Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital in New York, and president of the American Association of Cancer Research. Then it's, uh, we have people quite significant in Catalonia today in the United States that have contributed to the, the, the research in cancer and, and heart disease, etc., etc. No? Then we have people uh, everywhere. And when we make the, 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 the book, we find, as uh, I have uh, explained it to some of you, issues that we didn't know. And one of them, came from the NASA, no? <laughs> in the United States. Uh, we saw that in, in Alabama, NASA has one museum in which there is a permanent, uh, in, in Wynne Hall, is a permanent uh, explanation regarding Ramon Casanova-Danés because he was really the inventor of the jet engine in 1917. 1917, it's incredible. Uh, and that he tested successfully. 
and he registered, uh, but finally uh, he was engaged in other issues to, to, to create a new factory of, uh, for forging, etc., etc., and then he uh, abandoned the, the, the bet, is recognized as one of the precursors of this, of this kind of engines. Well, uh, in all fields, there are a lot of connections with the United States, and uh, we think that uh, it's important to increase the good relationship between Catalonia and United States in many issues. Many people from the United States came now to Catalonia to visit Catalonia. We are very proud of this. Uh, you, you, you know that we have uh, one of the most important crisis uh, port uh, in, in Europe is Barcelona. No? Then we have a lot of visitors from the United States and uh, at the contrary, we have a lot of Catalans that came here to visit this fantastic nation. Uh, thank you very much for your hospitality. And of course, we are at your full disposal for any kind of additional information. Here we have two copies of the book that uh, if you consider that it is now the right moment, we can make uh, the official delivery of the offer of the book. Okay. Thank you very much. And now Angela Kinney, the chief of the uh, African Latin American and Europe, Western European Division will um, accept the donation. Angela? More than five kilos. <laughs> I don't know how I can handle this. <laughs> and, and here is this folder that, as I explained to you, there is a, a small uh, explanation regarding the the, so what uh, the contribution aside? related with the United States. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we can have a photo. Step aside uh, a little bit on this side and we'll we can move. Oh, we're from the mic. Thank you. I have to say that the author of the cover of the book is here with us. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mead, that is one of the authors of the book as well. Mm -hmm. uh, specialist in all kind of... Uh, Thank you so much, Mr. Amoros, for this wonderful publication. Mr. Amoros actually took me aside before uh, the special program to show me this publication, uh, both the English and the Catalan version. And we're just extremely honored that you thought of the Library of Congress when you were looking for a place for this uh, wonderful publication to uh, reside. And my division, uh, the African, Latin American, and Western European Division is actually in charge of the cataloging as well as the acquisition of materials from uh, the Iberian Peninsula. So we are just thrilled to receive this gift from you. Um, we know it's a labor of love of many years, and um, we're just very proud to have it in the library's collection. So thank you so much for thinking of us when making this donation. Uh, as mentioned uh, before, Georgette Dorn, my colleague, our colleague here at the Library of Congress, couldn't be present today. However, Georgette conveys her best wishes to you and congratulations on you getting this publication in place and thanks you very much for having uh, donated this publication to the Library of Congress. We're just really, really uh, very excited about having it in our collections, getting it cataloged, and having it exposed to the, the uh, general public as a whole through our online catalog. Um, Georgette and I, um, our divisions, the Hispanic Division and my division, which we call Alawe, actually our staff work together to ensure um, that the library's collections in all formats um, are filled with cultural heritage materials from Spain and other Hispanic countries. In fact, our divisions uh, do a lot of work um, in that respect so that we ensure that the richness and the history of the Hispanic culture is available to scholars. 
worldwide, not just uh, from them coming to the Library of Congress, but actually seeing our collections through our online catalog. So we're looking forward to having this, um, these publications in English and in Catalan uh, in our catalog. The library has been acquiring materials, in, in fact, from Catalonia uh, since the 1950s through various avenues. We get publications through a purchase, exchange, gift, and deposit. Uh, we have a vendor, Pubil Libros, that actually resides in and, and operates in uh, Barcelona. And um, the library actually has a treaty, uh, a U.S. government and Spanish treaty, an intergovernmental international agreement that dates back to 1959 uh, that is um, with the National Library of Spain. And we acquire uh, publications from Spain through that treaty. We also have exchange agreements with various institutions in Spain. And so the library collects in various uh, formats and uh, in, in various ways, as I mentioned before, uh, through various channels from Spain. So today we're really excited to get have this publication as a gift to the Library of Congress um, and to be able to accept this. Um, the library's current strategic plan highlights our intention to fully connect with the community outside of the library and uh, both in the U.S. as well as in other countries. And so acceptance of this wonderful gift reinforces the library's mission to enhance its collections with mar remarkable cultural heritage publications like this one. We're very gratified to you for having uh, um, donated this publication to the library. Um, and so I would like to express, again, my gratitude to you, Mr. Amoros, uh, the president of the foundation, uh, for choosing the library as the stakeholder, the placeholder for this publication. Um, we were just really, really grateful to you for that. Thank you so much for that. And thank you all for attending this program. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.